a production of the Journal of Accessible Sciences. A supplement to our Intertidal 3 series covering much of what we learned during the summer of 2017. As much as we have learned of the wondrous diversity in the intertidal zone, it is still very hard to love barnacles. Of course, we were always aware of them, but it wasn't until we set out to create our Intertidal 3 documentary that we actually looked at them. We still don't love them, but familiarity brings some level of appreciation for their weirdness and for their tenacity. In the uppermost upper tidal zone, the smaller of the two common species survive, if just barely. A foot or two lower, they yield some of the territory to their larger cousins. These Cecil animals would gladly take over the world, but they are not adapted to all environments. Other animals want some of the real estate too. Limpets need a nice flat spot so they can pull down and withstand exposure when the tide is out. They plow barnacles aside to create space. Chitons want a nice hangout too, and they are aggressive about keeping it clear. Tube worms and anemones are also competitors for space. Two species of barnacle are evident on the beaches we've investigated. In this view we see a single hatched barnacle, Semibolanus cariosus, and a number of acorn barnacles, Bolanus glandula. The acorn barnacles are very tough little rascals. They even survive at the extreme uppermost tidal zone. Where we've set up our camera to catch the action in this tiny tide pool. Thanks to the barnacles, there is a thriving mini ecosystem. We'll point out a few of the other inhabitants as they appear. While the barnacles sweep the water for food, small snails and limpets graze the algae. Here's a little stop action sequence so we can see the sweeping action as the barnacles feed. Back to normal speed. Let's take a closer look at our two species, and especially the differences between them. Much smaller and far more numerous are the acorn barnacles. Thatch barnacles are larger, but are less adaptable to environmental extremes. While acorn barnacles are able to occupy the highest tidal zone, Thatch barnacles can't cope with such long exposure, so they don't appear until lower in the intertidal strata with their smaller cousins and a lot of other intertidal life forms. Let's explore the differences between the two common species within our study area. Little acorn barnacles rapidly attain their maximum width. In crowded conditions, they grow longer. Thatch barnacles retain their proportions as they grow. Sometime after reaching maximum size, they will die, providing habitat for additions to a complex ecosystem. This automobile-sized boulder is fully within the middle intertidal zone. Our hatch barnacles are the foundation for a complex web of life in a singular, isolated environment. Smaller acorn barnacles are also here, but scarcely noticeable. 
In this mature, old-growth system, there are very many participants. From time to time, a chunk is knocked off. This individual, Semibolanus karyosus, was a typical adult, having reached its maximum size and lifespan. Thanks to the folks at the Oregon Institute of Marine Biology, we see the hard parts identified. Our specimen reveals its irregular base, conforming to the contours of the substrate, and its dimensions. Its six plates and a rugose base surface for a very strong attachment to the substrate. The moving parts, the valves, are more complex than we might have guessed. The specific shapes are critical to species identification. Barnacles provide the foundation for rich and varied local ecosystems. We've shared some of our observations, but there is a great deal more to know. Here are some key phrases that will give you a starting point for your personal research. Thanks for watching.